Today we're going to talk about Metroid Prime 4 and also the Nintendo Switch doing something very, very interesting that, I, at least for me, is surprising, especially given the current landscape of games, but also does show that the Nintendo Switch, at least for now, is still doing extremely well in certain markets. Now, before we dive into this, I just want to remind you guys that we are on our road to 133,000 subscribers. We're getting closer and closer every day. Thank you so much for all of that support. I am trying to do YouTube full-time, so I appreciate when people subscribe to the channel, drop likes, and all of that. It just helps me on my journey, helps me inspire others, and frankly, I'm just very, very thankful for where I already am, and you guys make it all possible, so thank you so much. All right, let's get into this and talk first about what's going on with Metroid Prime 4. So, look, I've been told behind the scenes that Metroid Prime 4 is basically done. That's just what I've been told. Now, this is by a single source, so I haven't really made a video on that because I prefer to have multiple independent sources on stuff like this. So, while I do trust where I was told this information, it is still something that I have to question because I don't have multiple sources and the reality is that Retro Studios is supposedly still hiring for Metroid Prime 4 which would suggest the game's not done or at least isn't fully polished let's say they're hiring people to help polish the game so I got this headline from my Nintendo news and it says Retro Studios continues its hiring speed for Metroid Prime 4 and it says Nintendo announced back in 2019 that Retro Studios would be handling Metroid Prime 4 as the Austin-based company was rebooting the highly anticipated next 3D Samus Aran adventure. Today, the company has nine roles unfulfilled on their Nintendo careers page, with all of them stating at the bottom blurb that Retro Studios is currently in the midst of developing Metroid Prime 4 for Nintendo Switch. Now, there is a possibility that Retro Studios may be working on an additional project, but it seems likely Nintendo will want to get Metro Prime 4 out the door as soon as possible, as the project was announced six years ago. And sure enough, when you look at their job opening page and you go through all of their job openings, they do, in fact, mention Metroid Prime 4. So this would suggest, at least partially, that they are hiring for Metroid Prime 4. It's also possible that people are misinterpreting this and they're really just using Metroid Prime 4 as a, hey, we're working on games like Metroid Prime 4, you should come and work at our place. The, the hardest thing for studios like Retro Studios to do when they're hiring people is try to entice people to apply when they can't talk about the projects they're working on. Now, the one project that is public is Metroid Prime 4. So they you know, including Metroid Prime 4 and all of their hiring posts literally could just be to entice people to come through the door, apply, and then through the interview process, maybe they learn more, maybe they learn they won't be working on Metroid Prime 4, but whatever they're working on next, maybe they got to sign an NDA, yada, yada, yada. So I, I find this to be very interesting because I don't know that any of these hirings are specifically for... Well, Metro Prime 4, because again, I've been told the game is done, so it'd be weird if they were hiring things like concept artists and a senior external environmental artist. Like, why, why would they need something like that if the game's already done? That's why this stuff could be for the next game and they're just using Metro Prime 4 to help hire. But we can't dismiss the fact that it's possible they are hiring for Metro Prime 4 and that Metro Prime 4 is still a ways away. If we presume they rebooted development in 2019, then it's only been four years, so in theory, it, it could be another one, two, maybe three years before we see Metroid Prime 4. After all, AAA games are taking longer and longer and longer to develop. We saw that with Tears of the Kingdom. So we'll just have to wait and see. We're seeing Mario right now. When's the next big Mario game going to come, right? Now, one thing we do know as, uh, as a fact are sales numbers. And some interesting stuff is happening over in Japan. So we have the sales numbers for last week. And yes, Tears of the Kingdom is still number one. It beat out Diablo 4, showing obviously that Diablo 4 isn't necessarily as big of a deal in all regions. Now, it actually is quite close when you combine all sales of Diablo 4 together. So when you combine the PlayStation 5, PlayStation 4, and Xbox Series X version, which this might be the best-selling Xbox Series X game yet at launch anyways... It does come really close to Tears of the Kingdom, but still, Tears of the Kingdom will remain number one, even when all versions are combined. One, that's super impressive for Tears of the Kingdom, selling 
1,640,000 units. Like, that is just absolutely insane. And beyond Diablo 4, it's mostly a bunch of Switch games in the top 10 besides Street Fighter 6 chiming in at number 8. But what I find to be actually really fascinating is the hardware sales because obviously Tears of the Kingdom is selling less and less every single week. There wasn't a brand new Switch game release, and yet hardware sales nearly doubled last week. So Switch OLED sold 74,347 units, but then you have the base Nintendo Switch chiming in with 16,161 units, and the Switch Lite at number four with 13,905. If you combine all of that together, yes, folks, the Switch itself, the family of systems sold over 100,000 units in Japan last week, in a week without any new releases, in the middle of the seventh year of the platform, and with PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X out there, in particular PlayStation 5, you know, chiming in around 42,000 units when you combine the digital and, you know, physical disc version together. This t is incredible that in the seventh year of Switch, because we are in the midst of the seventh year, that they are able to move 100,000 units in a week when they have no new releases and PlayStation actually has a major release themselves. Now, what does this mean? Well, maybe maybe since the launch of Tears of the Kingdom, it's possible, it feels weird to say this, but it is possible the Switch could have been supply constrained. So that is definitely something that may have been happening in Japan. I haven't heard about any raffles or anything going on, but that doesn't mean the supply hasn't necessarily been low, especially of the OLED model. Now, we know here in the United States, it's been quite easy to get a Switch OLED, let alone any of the Switches, you know, pretty much for several months now we haven't had any shortages, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's been true in Japan. And maybe the fact that we haven't had shortages is because they prefer to allocate units here in the United States or maybe other parts of Europe. So, hey, this could have just been, you know, they couldn't meet demand for, you know, the Switch at launch of Zelda. And this is just catching up to that demand. But it doesn't really matter what the reasoning is on whether they're just catching up to demand from when Zelda launched or if they're just you know, seeing a natural increase because for some reason more people are excited for Switch now than ever before, which is interesting considering that Pikmin 4 is the next big game and that Pikmin's never been a big game in Japan. Or maybe they're just excited for some of the third-party games. You know, we did get some interesting announcements. Uh, I, I don't know how much this would have impacted sales, but things like the Persona 5 stuff, which we didn't really find out until this week, but Persona 5 Tactica is coming to Nintendo Switch. But, you know, Sonic Superstars is coming to Switch as well. So who knows, you know, Mortal Kombat 1, who really knows what made, you know, Japanese gamers want to run out last week and buy 100,000 Switches? But what we do know is that is an incredible number and something we typically were only seeing from the Switch during its heyday or during major game launches. So sure, during the pandemic, during major launches, we would regularly see the Switch top 100,000, sometimes approaching 200,000. But the Switch hasn't really topped 100,000 in a while, not even at launch of Zelda. So I do find it fascinating that it's doing it right now. And it does show the incredible legs of the platform. Now we all know nothing lasts forever. Nintendo is projecting overall sales drop this year compared to last year. And just because the Switch is doing, you know, maybe a bit better than expected at this point in Japan doesn't mean it's necessarily doing better than expected worldwide. Also, the further and further out we get from the Zelda launch and without Nintendo having another system seller dropping, at least you know, that we're aware of, you know, sales are going to start dwindling off as we get closer and closer to the holiday and the other platforms start getting their major games out. As an example, I suspect to see a major bump in sales for PlayStation 5 when Final Fantasy 16 launches this summer. So here's the way I'm looking at this right now. This is really good for Switch. It's showing that there's still a healthy market for the platform. We know there's a healthy market for game sales for the platform. We don't even need Japan to know that. We know how incredibly well Tears of the Kingdom has sold and how well other Switch games are selling right now. Breath of the Wild jumping back into the top 10. So that doesn't mean we're not going to get a new platform this year or next year. I do think that Nintendo is still going to do that sometime in the next 18 months. And this is mostly because just because the platform is healthy doesn't mean you want to milk it until it's not. That is a mistake Nintendo has made many, many times in the past. And Furukawa has stated many times he doesn't want to fall off the cliff. Well, you will fall off the cliff if you milk the success of Switch too long. While it's still relevant, while people still want to buy games, is the perfect time 
to drop a platform. But you know what? I don't work at Nintendo. I don't know what they're doing. I'm just excited to see the Switch is still healthy, still selling well. And from a personal perspective, well, I'm a tech enthusiast and I love buying all the latest and greatest stuff. I will say I'm pretty happy with Switch right now. And I'm not in any rush to go out and spend another $400 on yet another Switch. But I will, if it does happen, because I'll want it, because I can't help myself. Thank you guys so much for tuning in, and I'll catch you in the next video.